This will be another lesson in the series on finding the engram, and again we'll look at some current research using optogenetics. But first, some background. In other lessons, we've learned about the important role that the hippocampus plays in learning new information and in the consolidation process that transforms that memory to become more cortically dependent. Now, in the case uh, of this uh, lesson, we'll be looking at contextual fear memory, and this is the idea uh, that when you place an animal in a certain context and then give it a shock, it will show fear to that context at a later time. And the fear memories are contextually sensitive, so if the animal never got shocked in this cage here, it will not show fear if you put it in that cage. And we think the hippocampus is a critical structure f uh, for learning this type of uh, uh, contextual fear learning, whereas the amygdala was a critical structure for associating, say, a tone with a shock. The hippocampus is uh, a key structure in learning to fear a context. Now within the, uh, the hippocampus, the dentate gyrus, for example, here we see, let's say, a population of cells. Scientists have found that the different contexts activate different sets of hippocampal cells. So for example, the, this context over here, context A, might activate the pink cells, and context B would activate the green cells. So it would be a non-overlapping set of cells responding to different contexts. So in this study, then, we're going to ask the question, what's the relationship between the hippocampus and the cortex in memory processing? So here we have our little model of the hippocampus, and then we, here we have a bit of cortical tissue. So we got brain cells in the hippocampus, brain cells up here in the cortex. Now, here's what they did. They tagged the hippocampal neurons and the cortical neurons during a contextual fear conditioning paragraph. Uh, paradigm. So by tagging here, we mean using the optogenetic technique so that cells that were activated by the, the contextual fear learning paradigm, the cells that were activated both in the hippocampus and the cortex uh, triggered certain gene expression and then the uh, light sensitive proteins got it in, inserted into the membranes so that these cells now became controllable with light. So here we have then some population, population of hippocampal cells were responding to the context, as well some population of cortical cells were processing the context. And this was a, a fear memory, so we, we hope we are labeling here, in a sense, the, uh, the future engram cells for a fear memory. You'll recall the optogenetics technique is one where, uh, as the cells insert these light-activated uh, proteins into the membrane, you shine light on them, they open up, their little channels, ions go in, and you can activate the cell, or you can inhibit the cell, depending on which proteins get inserted into the membrane. And here's the, the rat with the little light uh, optic fiber there. Okay, so let's see. Two days after training, they silenced the tagged hippocampal neurons. So here they are here. So they're going to use the yellow uh, light to silence these cells. These were the engram cells in the hippocampus. They silenced the tagged hippocampal neurons and tested the rat in the same training context. Okay, so they were trained in A, now they're going to test in A, but, but while they put the rat back in that same context, they are silencing just the hippocampal cells. The fear memory was impaired. In addition, tagged cortical neurons were not reactivated. So notice they only, they only uh, shine the light here in the hippocampus, so they silenced these cells. They did not shine any light in the cortex in this experiment. Nevertheless, the, the relevant um, cortical engram cells were not activated. So a different set of hippocampal and cortical neurons, blue, were active during the testing procedure. So here we see a situation where normally we would think that if the animal is going to retrieve a memory, the same cells that were active during the learning are going to be reactivated during memory retrieval. Oh, but what they did was they blocked activity in these hippocampal engram cells. That seemed to cause a lack of activity in the cortical cells, and a different population of hippocampal and cortical cells seemed to be active. So they, they were able to impair the memory by just blocking hippocampal cell activity. Now this data suggests that the hippocampus must reinstate the cortical pattern of activity for memory retrieval to be successful. And we've seen this before in, in other lessons, this idea that the hippocampus stores the index or pointer for activating just those cortical engram neurons that are the biological basis of a given memory.
other inputs to the cortical neurons did not activate the specific set of neurons that were involved in the training, so memory retrieval failed. Under these conditions, the hippocampus was necessary for memory retrieval. So think about the act of retrieval. Remember we said that maybe what happens is the animal uh, in the retrieval context would reactivate the hippocampal neurons. Those hippocampal neurons would help to reactivate the pattern of, of uh, neural activity in the cortex and then the animal would be retrieving the memory. And we said the hippocampus was helping to reinstate that pattern of cortical activity. Well, in this study, they blocked the hippocampal neurons from being reactivated. And so it seems like what they did was interfered with the hippocampus being able to reactivate the cortical memory trace. And as a result, the animal could not remember. They did not show fear to the context. So this result supports this, this older idea that the hippocampus, the role it's playing is to help to reactivate the cortical uh, element or the cortical aspect of the memory trace. But we have a puzzle because in another study, researchers tested the rats at longer train test intervals to assess remote memory retrieval. And again, the rats did not show the fear behavior. Now this is puzzling because consolidation should have set up a cortical engram capable of supporting memory retrieval. Remember, uh, the idea of consolidation was to kind of transform the memory so it becomes hippocampal independent, that the cortex is more significant uh, under normal retrieval conditions. So they were testing at longer intervals and there should have been time for consolidation. But again, they found impaired memory when they silenced the hippocampal cells only. Now this, uh, this is a new technique, so a lot, a lot more research needs to be done here, but, but scientists speculate perhaps rapid inhibition disrupts all of the engram at multiple locations, thus interfering re with retrieval. And also, uh, other, other uh, studies that have been done previously often used pharmacological techniques or lesion studies to sort of damage one part of the brain or another. And, and usually then there's time for recovery. And in that recovery time, consolidation may be happening. So maybe, you know, that allows the cortical engrams to come online and support retrieval. So more research needs to be done here, but there is a bit of a puzzle that whether you do the silencing soon after learning or even uh, at longer train test intervals, uh, silencing the hippocampal neurons was interfering with memory retrieval. Oh, but wait, because now we're going to take a look at another study that uh, adds a twist. So in this study, researchers again are going to tag the hippocampal and the cortical neurons during a contextual fear conditioning paradigm. So again, the hippocampal cells will be activated and insert the light activating pro proteins and then some cortical neurons will insert light activating proteins. And after two days again, so it's a short interval of time, they silenced the entire hippocampus using a, 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 a certain technique while artificially activating the tagged cortical neurons. Now here we're going to use the blue light. So here we want the light to be activating the cortical engram neurons. Now the interesting question then was, would the cortical engram be strong enough to produce the fear behavior? Remember, we're just two days here, so there's not a whole lot of time for the consolidation processes to be repeatedly happening. And, the question, and we, we might uh, suspect that the cortical en engram would be weak here, but let's see if direct stimulation of the cortical engram can make a fear behavior. Sure enough, the rats showed a fear memory equivalent to that produced by actual training. So, artificial stimulation of the cortical representation can produce fear behavior early after training. Cortical activation was sufficient to produce the fear behavior. This suggests that learning produces a hippocampal engram and a cortical engram fairly rapidly. So this is supporting uh, evidence for the story we were telling in earlier lessons about you know, sort of how consolidation happens, that early on during learning, the hippocampus makes important changes, but the cortex is also processing the event, and there may be some uh, synaptic plasticity happening there as well. And we thought it was weak, and that's what consolidation did. It strengthened the cortical trace. Well, here we're seeing evidence that early on, the cortical engram does have the power to generate the behavior if you activate it directly.
Under normal circumstances, it is the hippocampal index that is responsible for reactivating the cortical engram. However, this data suggests that an early cortical engram has the power to generate the fear behavior. Perhaps consolidation involves a progressive strengthening of the cortical engram so that it becomes less dependent upon the hippocampus for reactivation. And we've seen this idea in earlier lessons on consolidation. In addition, it turned out that activation of the tagged cortical neurons uh, produced downstream activation of neurons in other brain regions in a fashion similar to that found during natural expressions of fear memory. So this is a very uh, artificial type of stimulation. It's not that normal sort of brain inputs are reactivating this cortical engram. We are coming along and uh, turning these cells on using the optogenetics technique. But even so, it seems that these cells have downstream, you know, uh, targets and that that kind of pattern of activity seemed similar uh, as when the animals uh, naturally retrieving a fear memory. So. In summary then, when an animal is put in a chamber and given a shock, it, it forms a fear memory, a contextual fear memory. And we think that uh, cortical regions are processing the event, hippocampal uh, cells are processing the event, and some of these, a subset of those cells, will become the engram for that memory. But there are distinct engrams here. And so now we're, we're looking at this idea of uh, the consolidation business where a memory is reorganized over distinct brain regions. Well, here we are, hippocampus and cortex. So we've got some cells that responded in the hippocampus, cells responded in the cortex. Now, uh, in the first experiment that we saw in this lesson, if you silence the hippocampal cells, the animal seems to fail to retrieve the memory. It's as if you interfere with the ability to reactivate the cortical engram. And so that's, that supports the idea that the hippocampus is needed early on in order to retrieve memories. But then in the next set of experiments, the researchers directly activated these cortical uh, neurons, and they did have the power to generate the, the fear behavior. So it, we, we arrive at this idea that, that early on, there is a cortical engram, but it is naturally weak. It can be activated by optogenetic you know, laser light, but under natural circumstances, it seems the animal needs the hippocampus to reactivate the cortical part of the engram, but it's, it's there. And then the idea is over time, consolidation is going to be transforming a memory so that the, the cortical engram becomes a more important factor in memory retrieval and the hippocampus becomes less, uh, less needed. Now, remember, the, the trace transformation people will say, if you're going to have a rich, detailed, episodic memory, you are still going to be having to activate the, the hippocampal cells. But uh, for lots of information we learn about the world, semantic memory, for instance, the idea is the cortical representation becomes uh, strengthened over time, uh, sufficient to um, sustain memory retrieval at later times.